Hey guys, real quick one this time, uh, sorry about the noise, I've got a 3D print running, my fan's on, it's really hot in this office. Uh, just wanted to take a second though and let you know that there have been some updates in the Crossfire X7 drama. Right now OpenTX and Team Black Sheep have both con every time with this. I eventually I will learn to turn the ringer off. At this point, both Team Black Sheep and OpenTX have confirmed that they are working on a fix to get this solved for everybody. In the meantime, there have been two different hardware modifications that have come up. One involved replacing or modifying a resistor, and the other one was adding an inverter and replacing, a, I, I think, an inverter. I mentioned these before in the other videos, and I tried to steer people away from them simply because these are not easy fixes. This is not something you'd really want to attempt unless you're really good with soldering and probably have like a reflow station and things like that. The reason for that is this. That is 10 of the resistors. 10. They're tiny. You can't do this by hand. Uh, you know, maybe you can't. I can't. I really can't. Plus, we find out uh, after a couple of minutes, if you just swap the resistor, it stops working. The second option was to install this transistor. Let me grab one of these guys. Right there, that's three of them. Might be hard to see. But they're also very tiny, and they have five little spindly spider thin legs on them that you have to solder to. It's not easy. Now this can be done, but you are also then soldering wires to SMDs and stuff on the board. It's, again, not recommended, unless you're very talented, or, like me, very desperate. I did it. I shouldn't have. I know I shouldn't have, but I did it anyway. Right about there is the inverter I put in there. It was not easy at all. It was hard. It's all very small things. I don't have the right equipment. I shouldn't have been doing this. I, I really shouldn't have. Uh, a friend of mine was gonna let me borrow a soldering station tomorrow. Uh, sorry, Anthony. Lucky for me though, it works. I actually have a working radio now. I can uh, turn this on here. I'll show you, I'll, I'll jump to a little video there. Uh, it, it goes through, I can bind, I can see the telemetry, I can see everything. I don't know how any of it works yet, but it does actually function the way it's supposed to, which is cool. I haven't tried it for very long. I'm gonna do that now. And uh, I haven't actually tried it in flight, which is scary because I don't know. But I'm gonna bind it up to some other stuff too and make sure that the radio itself still works. Again, probably don't do this. Just wait. Should be a matter of days before an actual fix is out that involves just a firmware update. So you don't have to crack into your radio and do all this other stupid stuff like I did. There will be another way. Better, worse, I don't know yet. Uh, pretty much the only way around it is to lower the baud rate. It should be okay, but we don't know. Uh, we just don't know what it's going to do just yet. So stay tuned. I'll figure something out for you if I can. Subscribe to the channel, like, comment if you got something nice to say, and we'll see you around.